Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here at California Weather Watch. Today is March 25th and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery and if you look closely you can see British Columbia, Oregon, California there. Look out across Pacific subtropical moisture just waiting for this much talked about merger here coming off the state of Alaska. Across the Gulf of Alaska this is what's going to develop that storm system off the Oregon and Northern California coastline here for rapid cyclogenesis probably reaching bomb cyclone status off the coastline here. It's going to cast a powerful frontal system down the the state of California, big precipitation amounts, strong winds, big waves, and of course, heavy mountain snows can be expected with this storm system. But the weather model has been picking up on this several days in advance, and you can see just how well they've been doing it. If you've been watching the channel here, you've been knowing that I've been showing this cold air coming and merging with this subtropical moisture here, and you can see it plain as day here on the infrared satellite imagery. Taking a look here, you got the European on the left versus the GFS on the right, precipitable water, and you can see all the subtropical moisture here across the Pacific Ocean there. Put it into motion and you'll see that polar lobe drop down and of course merge with that much warmer air and get a strong pressure gradient which will give that rapid cyclogenesis here. Bomb cyclone status likely right off the coastline here for the GFS a little bit further offshore here with the European. Either way it's going to bring a strong frontal system across the state here but you can see the differences in that frontal system the timing as we go on in through early to mid this upcoming week. So we still have some things to work out here. As you can see, that difference in low pressure placement, for example, here on the European and the GFS. This is National Weather Service Sacramento. Heavy mountain snow, significant mountain travel here. There's going to be a thunderstorm threat with this system as well. So we'll watch that over the next couple of days and go into that a little bit more detail coming up. This is that heavy snow winter storm. Watches are in effect from Northern California. I-5 north of Redding. Siskiyou's are going to get hit with some snowfall out of this. And you can see some of this 2 to 4 feet above 4,000 feet for some of the Sierra Nevada here, one to three feet, generally above 3,500 feet there. And this is again, March 27th through March 29th coming up. This is wind gust potential, 40 miles per hour or greater. This is National Weather Service Bay Area. And again, these details are going to be refined as we get closer to the event. Of course, it's going to favor the higher terrain. But again, another windy system potentially here for some of northern, central, and even southern California coming up here. We'll watch that as we go over the next couple of days as well. This is looking at the European here. We're going to look at the surface pressure map. As you can see, that trough digging down, merging with that subtropical moisture and going through its rapid cyclogenesis here off the coastline. Strong gradient here across the southeast side. And again, this matters where this low pressure system sets up. Of course, the closer it gets to the Bay Area, for example, the windier it's going to be there. So we'll kind of play out these details here over the next couple of days. We still have a little bit of time first before we need to like really nail down those details. But you should be prepared across much of the state uh, for the next storm system moving in. This is looking at accumulated max 10 meter wind gusts. And you can see if we back up a little bit more, that system coming down out of the north merges. And then you can see that bomb cyclogenesis, that powerful mid-latitude cyclone here off Northern California as it comes down the state. So how much of the high wind will get into the state is kind of yet to be seen as of this moment. Here we go, 500 millibar relative humidity, and you can see that subtropical moisture out here. Here goes the trough digging down here, and you can see these two merge. Again, just a nice visual representation of what the cloud shield might look like here. And you can kind of see there's going to kind of be an eye feature too, as this thing is going to be very beautiful here on the infrared satellite imagery. As we go on in through Monday on into Tuesday there, this is going to make for quite the nice scene on the satellite imagery. Now looking here, we've got temperatures at 925 millibars, about 2,500 feet. I wanted to show you this warmer air out here associated with that subtropical moisture. Trough digs down, look at that cyclogenesis there and that low pressure bombs out off the Northern California coast, strong pressure gradient to the south. Backing up a little bit here, and you can kind of see that warm tongue, which is a classic signature of mid-latitude cyclones. This is warm air gets brought up above and in, in front of the cyclone here. And then you get the strong pressure gradient on the back side of that with some strong winds as this low pressure center starts to sag down south across the state here. And we'll see just, you know, what it's going to do. We don't quite know. Is it going to pinwheel around and then slowly slide, slide south and bring more precipitation that is forecast? It's hard to say just yet. So those are details we have to watch here closely. This is the UW GFS model, by the way, that I'm showing. Now taking a look here, this is a maximum cape. And if we put this into motion, you can see that trough coming down, merge with that subtropical moisture here off the coast of California. And you see there is quite a bit of cape to work with here. So you can't rule out things like water spouts, Brief, brief and weak tornadoes across the state could be a possibility with this system as it sags down across Southern California 
from north to south as you can see as i'm backing up there and replaying it forward again we're going to be dealing with that potential here again as we go through early to mid this week coming up we'll look at that in more detail as the high resolution models come in range this is the gfs total precipitation in inches this is hot off the press this is the 12z run going as we speak here so we're going to play this thing out here and then you'll see there goes the system right there and it starts to bring in that precipitation some pretty heavy amounts for some of the higher terrain especially bay area could get up over an inch maybe two inches for some areas as well again depends on just how long the slow pressure system hangs off the coastline how close it is and how deep that low gets but it's going to bring some precip all the way down through southern california it looks like at this point and now something interesting as i play off into the extended there's kind of an upper level trough that hangs out as we go on in through the following week as well and then the potential for more systems after that as you can see i mean we're over 250 hours out so you got to take this with a grain of salt but it does show systems still coming through into early march and that really becomes a danger period because we've got so much water stored up in as snow across some of the sierra nevada and the higher terrain so once you get into april you know things are starting to warm up and that sun starts getting strong you could really have some rapid melting going on especially what the big precipitation maker could make for some very concerning flooding issues here across the state now looking at this seven day precipitation you can see the big amounts across from the higher terrain coastal regions pretty typical with these storms as it comes in even some bigger amounts down towards the southern california mountains as well so we'll try to nail down some of these details here as we go over the next day or two as well now looking at the gfs this is total snow ratio in inches and here we go there goes that next system here and again two to four feet above 4,000 feet is possible here for the sierra nevada no rest for the weary more mountain snow is incoming we're going to continue to build up that snow water equivalent across a lot of the sierra nevada coming up and some areas across northern california and the siskiyou's i-5 north of reading are going to get hit pretty hard with this storm here as we go through midweek so truckers watch out once you start getting in that higher terrain southern oregon into northern california especially and that goes without saying across some of the passes going back and forth through the sierra nevada as well as you guys unless you've been under a rock here for the last couple of months you guys have known the huge issues that have been going on with these huge snowfalls going across the sierra nevada and that's going to continue with this storm coming up here this is looking at maximum individual wave height if we put it into motion you can see the rapid development of that storm system there and it's going to bring some big waves with that potentially all the way down through southern california as well and if we go into the extended here, you can see kind of the upper level trough bringing some big wave action again out towards the 10 day period. This is the European model, maximum individual wave height there. So we still got this active weather potentially on in through early April coming up. This is day four excessive rainfall outlook here. Now this frontal system is fairly progressive. So it's just barely meeting atmospheric river criteria. More on that here in a moment. So this is not gonna hang out over any one given location for more than 24 hours or it shouldn't it's not forecast to right now this is but this is through tuesday morning through wednesday morning there is that slight risk all along mainly the central california coastline you can see the marginal extends to other areas there we'll watch this closely and hopefully this atmospheric river does not get hung up on anywhere but right now it looks fairly progressive and this is kind of highlighted here you can see it's just an ar1 so it, the impacts are not expected to be too huge, but it is going to be, you know, it's kind of on the moderate side, but it is a quick hitter. So it's going to be moving down across the state fairly rapidly. And this kind of shows you here, weak, maybe nudging into the moderate AR category there, but not a big, sinister, warm, atmospheric river coming in here. So yeah, we've got that going for us at least. And this kind of shows you the atmospheric river scale. This is how we rate them. So this is integrated vapor transport. This is the amount of vapor transported in the atmosphere. And then the duration is on the bottom. So you can see the stronger the transport of vapor and then the longer the duration, the bigger the impacts the atmospheric river have from exceptional to extreme strong, moderate, weak, and not even an AR there. So we're just barely getting into that. You can see not hanging out for 24 hours, but the vapor transport just enough maybe to hit the moderate category there briefly. So anyway, yeah, weather model's been picking up this well in advance here, and here it comes. You can just about to see these are just starting to merge as we speak. This is gonna wrap up that subtropical moisture off the Oregon coast and really develop here 
off of the coastline, Northern California. It's going to be quite the spectacle here, I assume, by, uh, you know, in the next 24 to 40 hours, you're going to really see the development. And it's going to look pretty spectacular on the infrared satellite imagery. You'll probably see it all over social media coming up here. If not from me, I'm sure from somebody else. But we'll continue to go over these details over the next couple of days. So stay tuned here. Tomorrow we'll take a closer look at things. And high-resolution models are going to start to come in range tomorrow as well. So we'll be able to look at those and try to pinpoint some of the wind speeds and some of the highest snow locations here and just how low that snow level is going to get. And yeah, we'll take a look at the wave activity again also. But anyway, hope you guys are enjoying this break and able to prepare for this next system coming up. And through the very extended forecast, there is the potential for more systems on in through early April. So do not let your guard down out there. Continue to be prepared. Don't be scared. And yeah, we'll do this again tomorrow and I'll talk to you guys then.